Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 30 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, where today we're going to get into some real and true automation, courtesy of refined storage. Um, so once you get a refined storage system up and running, and especially once you get wireless access to said refined storage system up and running, it's a good time to start looking at automating things with refined storage, because... Crafting is boring, especially when you have to craft a lot of things and a lot of different components. And then there's, you know, smelting and processing and ore is pulverizing and induction smelting and all these other machines that have to do all these craftings. And you're like, I don't want to do that. I just want to click a button and get a bunch of stuff all at once. Well, look no further. Uh, both refined storage and applied energistics have ways to make this happen. Uh, what we're obviously going to be focused on today is the uh, refined storage approach. Applied Energistics, like I said, we'll be playing with that at some point in the future. Uh, so in order to get started, we're going to have to make a few things so that they can make a few things. So the first thing we're going to need to make is a crafter. Uh, and when I make this first crafter or two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on making sure that all the subsequent components can be automatically crafted. And then our lives become that much easier. So let's start with making a few crafters, right? So in order to do this, uh, we are going to need a few refined processors and a little bit more silicon. So let's make sure. Actually, do we have more Certus dust? We actually do. That's great. Uh, remember, you do get Certus quartz dust from mining. So not a bad time right there. And we'll probably also use this instance to kind of do the Certus Quartz Dust Infinite Duplinking, because the stuff we built a few episodes ago is still going to play a role, even in our refined storage world, because we're getting silicon from Certus Quartz Dust. So being able to dupe all that stuff as much as we have been is going to pay dividends into the future. So that's going to be cool. So let's go ahead and uh, make ourselves a few uh, things that we're going to need. So we're going to need some advanced processors for automation, right? Like if you're going to automate, it needs to be an advanced processor. So I'm going to start with four crafters. Um, now, reborn storage is a thing that allows us to, to basically have a large multi-block crafting system. But I'm going to start with the basic crafter, which, by the way, you can totally color whatever color you want if you want. Um, and then once we have the basic crafter in place, then we'll look towards using reborn storage, which should speed things up and improve things for us. And that would be cool. Reborn storage is kind of like the booster pack for refined storage. Like you get some really powerful stuff uh, going that route. <coughs> so uh, with that said, let's get four of you. Let's get four of you. Well, we're going to need a few more, it looks like. Let's go with... 16-ish? Does that sound like a good number? Sure. And here's where, you know, automation is going to come in really nice because we don't want to have to do this manually. When we're done with this process, we will be able to fully automate everything that we're trying to do. Sweet. All right. So now for crafters, like I said, we want about four of these. Let's get another stack of this. And uh, you'll notice that you do go through uh, some quartz and rich iron pretty quickly. But hey, there's the four that we wanted. Nice. All right, cool. In addition to this, we're going to need some patterns, and patterns are an important part of this process. So uh, let's see. I should have some more sand in here. That's the wrong thing. I went mining again between episodes. You can always tell when I've been mining because uh, I have I have a bunch of resources, or at least I have that pocket three storage outside my bag. <laughs> That's usually a good indication. Like, hey, Dyer must have been mining. Sweet. Man, where would I be without my time in a bottle? Let me tell you. We need to start amping up our, our tech resources because we really aren't quite there on tech just yet. I've been kind of, you know, neglecting my tech. So it's a thing we're going to need to do. So let's get a few blank patterns. Uh, obviously, we're going to need even more quartz enriched iron. Did I mention that you need a lot of quartz enriched iron yet for this mod? Like, is that a thing that I've said? I hope so. I hope I said it. The other thing we're going to need is a pattern grid. And this is a, a, a useful little mechanic. So the, the pattern grid is how we're going to teach applied uh, our, our refined storage all about how to make things. So let's see, that might be cool. All right, so we're definitely going to need another one of you. And we're definitely going to need a couple of you. Let's get like eight more of these while we're at it. Perfect. Okay. So that should be where we get our pattern grid from. Beautiful. Nice. So, so a refined storage doesn't know all the crafting 
patterns that exist in the world. Uh, it can't. E even if it looked at Minecraft's list of how to craft things, it can't deduce um, how to make certain components like, you know, smelting and, and pulverizing and induction smelting. It's not something that's easy to do. So what we do, uh, our job is to teach refined storage how to make things. And that is done simply with patterns. And there's two kinds of patterns you can make. Regular patterns, which is what you would make if you were working in just like a regular old vanilla crafting table, like this pattern right here, okay? And that is just, hey, if I were standing at a crafting table, I could make this pattern, okay? Other types of patterns exist, and those are processing patterns. And what those are, as you can see, uh, they do a bunch of cool stuff. You can say, I insert items into one machine, and I extract the results out of either the same machine or a different machine. Okay, so processing patterns are for anything that's not a crafting table. This includes things uh, like induction smelters and multi-servo presses and fluid encapsulators and pulverizers and redstone furnaces and you name it. Uh, as a matter of fact, we could do something down here where you insert something into this chest and then the output would be this chest. So refined storage doesn't need to know all the intermediary steps. All refined storage needs to know is I put in this item and I get out a different item. That's it. So if we were teaching logic processors, for example, we would say we insert one gold, one redstone, and one silicon, and we would output a logic processor. Refined storage doesn't need to know about all the intermediary steps that happen. We've automated that outside of refined storage. So the key here is insert X, output Y, whatever that happens to be. So for example, if we were doing glass, it would be insert sand, output is glass. And whether that's a vanilla furnace or, you know, the redstone furnace or any other method of smelting that, it would be fine. <clears throat> so all we do is go up here to our pattern grid. What I like to start by automating is many of the basic components of refined storage. Um, so let's do that. All right. So here's the ones I usually like to do first. I like to do patterns. And since we're doing patterns, we should probably do quartz and enriched iron because we know we need to know how to make that. Uh, in addition to that, from refined, um, I would like to have this, this, and this guy ready to go. Now these are all normal crafting recipes. However, to turn them into what they need to be, we need to create processing recipes. And that would be this, because they have to be processed in some kind of machine. This machine happens to be a smeltery. So we could use a vanilla furnace or we could use you know, whatever we want to do over here, something along these lines. What augment do I have in you? You would probably be a good one. I think for sure I'm going to tap into this guy for a time being. So let's let's see how to automate this machine. I'm just going to place down our crafter. And the crafters have a direction, by the way, that they face. And you have to make sure that the crafter is facing the machine that it's going to work on. Okay. The other thing that's important for, for, for these is to make sure that the machine will accept items from the direction that you're trying to send them. Uh, so that's an important piece too. Make sure not to forget that. Uh, and then we also have to wait to get the items into, um, back into the refined storage system once they're crafted. So here it is. It's really pretty simple. It's not all that complicated. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is be ready to run this down here with some more cables. And the reason I'm clearing out this whole back area is because we will probably eventually add crafters to this you know line here for some other machines as well so we should be prepared for that being an eventuality uh so that's what i'm doing uh so now if we look at this guy we can see we can if we hold shift you can see what it makes so i'm gonna put those three pattern guys in here if we go over to here now you'll notice that when i look at refined we have the option to craft those now currently it's not going to let me actually craft them because i haven't Quite taught it how to make raw advanced processors yet. I still have those patterns in my inventory. So let's go uh, down into our basement and find a nice place uh, to start adding some crafters. And I see no reason uh, to not just start putting them here for now. And then, like I said, we'll have a better place for this later. So into our crafters goes all the vanilla crafting recipes, right? Anything you would craft in a, in a regular old crafting table goes directly into crafters not facing machines. If it is facing a machine, it's going to be a ref like, you know, something like this where it's doing that. So if I came down here now and said, hey, I need an advanced processor, shouldn't be a problem. It's going to start crafting. And if we look over here, you can see it already inserted a raw um, guy into here. And now it's just sitting in the redstone furnace because the crafter is not responsible for pulling items out of a machine. 
all it does is put items in. So we need to now get items out and send them somewhere. <clears throat> so let's do that with, I don't know, I'm just gonna pick a mod out of thin air. Laser IO? Sure, that sounds fun. That sounds fun. So what we're gonna have is an interface here whose job it is to, um, to basically uh, get those items back into uh, the refined storage system. Does that sound like a plan? Okay, so we're gonna make an exporter. We're gonna make an, uh, not ex uh, uh, importer. And then we want an interface, but that needs a machine casing. And that should be cool. And the interface, I'm just gonna stick right here for the time being. So now all we need to do is get this advanced processor into the interface. And once it goes into the system, it's going to recognize the completion of the craft. And we can keep an eye on things with something called a crafting monitor. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, now let's do this. Let me show you. Now's a good time to demonstrate something really cool. Uh, if we look at refined, and I want to put you also in JEI synchronized two-way. Um, if we look at that and say, hey, I want you to know how to make machine casings. Um, but I would really like you to use smooth stone for that purpose and exact mode here. So as we know, we can make machine casings with diorite or granite or smooth stone or infested stone or polished andesite or polished diorite. So what this is, is there's a lot of different things we can use. If it's on exact mode, it's going to use exactly what we told it to use. So you have to use smooth stone. If it's not on exact mode, it might do something else, right? Like we could tell it to, I guess sandstone is not a good thing, but do we have any andesite in here? We have some polished andesite. I mean, that's kind of cool. So if I threw some andesite at it, that might be another approach, right? Um, or I could just say not exact and it will use whatever it's got that'll fit. Uh, but sometimes it might use things we don't want it to use. Like maybe there's a rarish kind of resource that it's gonna start snagging um, and we don't want it to do that. So it's up to you guys if you wanna use exact mode or not. So I'll start with the polished andesite. And then since I told it to use polished andesite, I should probably also teach it how to make polished andesite. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll just use this guy to throw a bunch of andesite into here. And now we have andesite for days. Cool. So by doing that, we now know how to make most of the things we need to make the crafting manager so or monitor. So notice when I mouse over this, First off, it's going to tell you what items you already have available because there's no overlay. Um, items that you don't have available um, and can't craft, for example, glass. If I, I haven't taught it how to craft grass, glass yet. So if I came in here and said, hey, I want a crafting monitor, when I mouse over, uh, oh, I guess there is some kind of glass still. Uh, oh, it's in my inventory. <laughs> it's being smart. So smart, refined storage, so smart. Uh, now see how the, the glass is red because we don't have any glass and we don't know how to make glass. Items that are blue, we don't have any of, but we do know how to, how to make. So that's convenient. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that glass out of my backpack, put it back in here. And now it tells me if I control click, it'll request auto crafting. It'll try to automatically make the things it needs. So I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead and craft two patterns and go ahead and craft a machine casing. And when I do that, I can now again just come over here and click. And it's going to say, hey, <laughs> because of all that auto crafting, we use up all our quartz. So let's control click again, make a little bit more quartz. And now we're ready to craft our crafting monitor. How cool is that? Uh, and I'm going to pop that right up there. And this is a thing that will show you all the auto crafting currently happening. So, for example, if I came back to Refined and I said, hey, make me another advanced processor. Um, what it's going to do is it's gonna come up here and say, hey, I'm currently processing that advanced processor. I'm waiting to turn that raw advanced processor into an advanced processor. And the reason it's waiting is because we still haven't set up any way to transfer it out of the redstone furnace. So once the refined storage system gets the item it's looking for, it completes the crafting request. And we'll demonstrate that now by using laser IO. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna configure this guy to output on the top. And in laser IO on the downside, I'm going to extract all the items I can. Okay. And then on what side is this? This is north, so that would be south, right? We'll just do insert. And then boom, it pulls that out of there. It went into the interface import. And then when we come over here, we'll see that advanced processor landed it in the system. And crafting is no longer occurring because, hey, we completed the craft. Uh, and we can do the same for glass, for example, because glass is a good one. 
Uh, we know we're going to need to make glass at some point, so let's just teach it how we can turn sand. And what I'm going to say is alternatives. So we can either just do red sand or any forge sand or Minecraft sand. Doesn't really matter. Uh, I guess we'll do that. Or I could just say um, I could clear this and make it just regular sand. And what I'll do is I'll snag a bit of that and just put it in there. And keep in mind, by the way, you can do multiples at a time. So I could say 64 sand. And if I did that, what I should put is 64 glass on the other side. Because ultimately what this is going to say is you put in this item, you get out that item. So you could say put in 64 sand, get out 64 glass. We will probably do that later in the future. It's a good time. Uh, so now how about the crafting manager? This guy's another good one to have. Uh, we are going to want a couple of crafters though. Uh, what I should do is I should add, not that, let's see, crafting monitor, crafting manager. I want to teach you how to make this, and I want to teach you how to make this, because we don't know that yet. And how annoying is it that I have to keep popping down here and putting this in here, and then popping back up? Super annoying, which is why I'm going to make a crafting manager right now. So, hey, control click, get me everything I need for this. And then you should have a crafter made for me pretty soon. There you go. And now, hey, I want another one, please. Control click. Click, 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 click. Get all the things. Right? And we can come over here and see that, yeah, like it's actually smelting and doing its stuff. It's the best, right? Automation is so fun. Now, did you actually make those other two? You might not have. So let's control click that again. Oh, we're missing processor bindings. Well, there's a thing we need to learn how to make, right? So let's teach you how to make processor bindings. I just say that, and now he knows. Now this one has filled up, so now we have to start populating the second crafter. Okay. And that's probably why I didn't make those other two diamond guys, because we ran out of resources. Cool. So you can see it's melting over there. And now we have two of them. And now the crafting manager, control click, boom, boom, boom. Just waiting for the, there we go, crafting manager. This guy's super cool. I'm going to pop him right up here. What he can do is see all the crafters that exist in your entire network. So these are the three manual crafters that I've placed in the basement. And this is the redstone furnace that I have uh, created up there. So if I want to add glass, remember I just created that glass recipe? I can just pop that right in there. And now we're ready to craft glass. And I think I can, is it control shift click? and hit start, and what it'll do is drop a piece of sand in there, craft it, and then suck it right into the system. How great is that? Super cool. Now we've got a stack of glass, and all of this works remotely, by the way. Not a problem. Make me 10 more glass, please. It's cooking. So cool. So cool. All right. So that's a hefty amount of automation for one day. I'm loving it. Now let's talk about power a little bit because as we expand our refined storage system and add things like crafters and interfaces and all this other stuff, it's going to start using more and more power. Remember last episode when we were using 15 RF and tick? Well, things have changed. We're at 123 now. So things are getting pricier by the minute and that's never a fun time. Uh, so we have one, two, we have basically one of these, um, which, which is generating 120 RF a tick. So basically this entire magmatic dynamo is currently dedicated fully to powering our refined storage system. And we don't even have that much stuff there. Now, in fairness, the wireless transmitter is using 40 of that 120. So like that's a big cost because it's wireless, you know, it costs a lot of energy to transmit and whatnot. Um, so we need, to, we need to start considering our changes to power production. Um, there's a few things I'd love to play with a little bit, but I'm... You know what? I'm going to look at it. It's been so long since I've played with, uh, what has it been called? That's how long it's been. Uh, let's see. Where is it? Where's, where's those crystal things? Yeah. Deep resonance. Deep resonance, my friends. How old school is deep resonance? Oh my goodness. Uh, I, 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 I don't even know. Uh, now is there a patchouli book for that one? Uh, how is he doing his book stuff these days? Thermal. Become a the the guide to playing reborn storage. There's a lot of books we have to look through. I should play with little logistics at some point. That sounds like a fun one. Hey, that's me, Laser IO 101. Um, 
Have I ever called out that I have a patchouli book? I don't know that I've ever even mentioned it. I don't know that I've even ever mentioned it, but it totally exists. And it's totally cool. Tells you all the details of how everything works. If you guys are unsure about Laser.io, highly recommend reading it because it tells you every single feature and how it all works. I'm pretty proud of this one. You know, just saying. I don't have to read that book because I wrote it, but like, you might want to read it. <laughs> uh, so let's see, I made my craft manager, I made my pattern grid, I made my craft, okay, that's all good. Um, so yeah, deep resonance. Is there any kind of in-game guide for that anymore? Or not really. Um, I'm not seeing a lot here. I remember there's radiation. I kind of want to play with this because it's been so long. Um, but I'm not seeing a much of in-game resources in terms of how-tos. So what I might need to do is do a little bit of research around, how does this work now? Is it the same as it was before? So let's start looking at Deep Resonance a little bit. It's been so long since I played it, I'm just gonna kind of figure it out as I go. And I'm not gonna lie, I actually have my own spotlight from, when did I do this? When did I, when did I even do this video? Let's see here. Uh, October 9th, 2016. So this is a six-year-old mod spotlight, which I'm literally watching on my second monitor to remember how this mod works. It's hilarious. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, that's what I'm doing right now. But, you know, things happen. Uh, I mean, I haven't played with the mod in years. How am I expected to remember how it all works perfectly? Come on. Come on. Give me a break. So anyway, let's play with Deep Resonance. So I know uh, from watching the spotlight that I'm going to need a few things. I'm going to need the smelter. Uh, and for that, we're going to need uh, one of these guys, and we're going to need some resonating stuff. So we need to smelt uh, a few of these deep resonating ores. So let me smelt like eight of them. Does that sound like a good starting point? Uh, now, this is the ore that we've been finding underground. And when we smelt it, we're going to get resonating plates. And hey, not for nothing, don't forget that this thing is not going to extract just for what we did for refined storage, but it's now going to extract for everything. So keep that in mind. It doesn't hurt if it does because it just winds up in here. And then in the end, we always have our 64 resonating plates now. And then we can use these resonating plates to make a deep resonating machine. So let's start with one of those. And we're also going to want a couple tanks. I know that much uh, from how far I've gotten into my own spotlight video. So we'll see. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we want to turn one of those machines into this guy, which is a smelter. Now, filter material doesn't look too bad. Though we are going to need some a gravel. So let's get ourselves a stack of that. And I seem to recall we want a healthy amount of this filter material. So let's just get a stack and then we'll use some of it to make our first smelter. And then we'll use the others for whatever it needs to be for. I don't remember, I hardly remember this mod at all. I have no idea how this mod works. I completely forget. I just remember that it's a good mid game power source. Like some things are good for early game, like lava based energy some things are good for late game like nuclear energy i remember this one being good in the middle so that's why i'm kind of just winging this um so let's pop down here now i know i'm going to need to tap into my lava uh that i currently have access to so let's um how should we do this what i might do is pop right back into here yeah that sounds good What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use laser IO again, which is a surprise to no one. And the reason I'm using laser IO is because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a good reason to do it. Um, so let's do, let's do that here. And where's my laser laser connector dude? Probably have one somewhere. Yeah, there we go. So bind that guy to here. That looks good. And what I'd like to do is I'd like the opposite side of this guy, the, the north side, to be an insert of all things. Okay. And I would like to place a tank here. And as I recall from Deep Resonance, basically the way this works is we place a tank, and then we place a smelter, and then we place another tank on top. And resonating ore goes into this slot, and it needs RF power which I'm gonna connect up right now with some pipes. See how handy it is to have wireless access? Like it's the best. 
think what I'll do is this. There we go. Okay, so now he's got power, and then he needs lava. But you want the lava in the tank to be about halfway... Oh, I didn't want to do that. About halfway full. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this guy. I'm going to get a counting filter. Okay, I'm going to put this in here. And then we're going to set you in stock mode. And I'm going to use lava. Drag that in. And I'm going to keep one bucket in there at this point and see what that does. Um, now, do I want exact mode enabled? I'm going to say no. That's okay. doesn't need exact mode. Regulate? Might not be a bad idea, but it shouldn't need regulation unless I do something stupid. So I'm going to say no need for regulate. Um, and that should be cool. So if I do that, what should happen is he should request a bucket of lava. Now, why are you not doing that? an exceptionally good question you do have lava yes yes oh oh right 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 um it's because you can't access this from the side remember we ran into that problem so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna get another tank let's use can i use basic fluid tanks that should be fine if i did this and i put this here he should fill up with lava, right? And we can see that happening courtesy of pipes. So pipes is draining out of the ender tank and into the basic fluid tank from mechanism. Then on the down slot here, I'm gonna put this guy. And then he should be able to extract some lava and stick it right in there. Now 1000 looks to be about, I don't know, 10%. Uh, so let's go into here and I'm gonna control shift click. Let's bring this up to eight buckets of lava. How's that sound? That looks like more, doesn't it? How much do you hold in total? 10? All right, so then what I want you to be is five, and I'm gonna turn on regulate mode. And now if there's room in here, which there absolutely is not, it would have put it in there. Uh, so let's do this. Let's do... What I should do is, uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn off regulate mode because we don't super need it. Right, so now if it dips below five, it should refill immediately. Aha! Or within, a, within 20 ticks, because that's how often it operates. So that should be cool. So I remember that you wanna be between 40 and 60% full on this, and that's gonna be your best bet for melting your fluid. So now, I also recall from the video that I just watched eight seconds ago, that about 30 ore is enough for like your first crystal or something. So I'm gonna put that in there and see what happens. Um, so what we should be getting in the tank above, right? And that's staying right at 5,000, right? And if we keep an eye on this, you know, if it uses it, it's gonna drip down and then just boop, right back up. And it's gonna keep it right at 5,000 for us, which is cool. Nice. And hey, look at that. Uh, so I think the key here is quality. I want to say your quality is determined by the fact that you've melted it and kept the, the tank here halfway full. Um, so if this wasn't halfway full, it would be a lower quality, which would be bad. Now, this fluid you can see on your tooltip tells you how much the efficiency, purity, and strength will be. I'm going to assume efficiency is how long it lasts. Purity something and strength might be how much RF a ticket. I don't remember the attributes. We'll figure it out. But long story short, uh, we're making the fluid. We're melting down the deep resonating ore. Um, we're keeping this at, you know, half half full. And this guy is, is just getting some really pure, good quality liquid. Um, now we need to process this liquid to bump up the efficiency, purity, and strength metrics. I have no idea how that works. I completely forget. But we're going to figure it out together. However, what I'm going to say is we will probably figure that out together next episode. Because at this point, uh, it's wrapping up point, right? So is there even a liquid? There's no liquid crystal in JEI. That's interesting, too. Well, we're going to be, we're going to be learning this together, folks. It'll be fun. Um, so I've got, you know, a little tank of liquid here. I'll just drop in here for now. We're going to absolutely want to figure out 
how to play with the metrics of this liquid crystal. And this might actually be a good test for me because I'm pretty sure this liquid crystal has an NBT value. And I don't think I did a lot of testing with fluids and NBT. So uh, yeah, because you can, you can compare NBT with fluids and I'm pretty sure my mod will work with that. I just don't know that I tested my mod with that. So we're gonna test it together live on camera as part of my Let's Play series. How's that sound? Sounds like fun. But you can see like the quality, efficiency, purity, and strength. Those are all in NBT. Like that's stored in the NBT data of that fluid. So it's important for us to, to know what's up with that. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come back next episode. We're gonna look into, uh, I'm gonna watch my own spotlight and see you know how this mod works a little more. I know we want to increase those numbers and the higher we get those numbers, the more RF a tick we'll be able to generate from that crystal and the more fun we can have with more and more power. Uh, but we're absolutely probably gonna need to have a bigger battery at some point. So we'll have to upgrade this guy as well. For now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time to play a little bit more with Deep Resonance and then probably look at getting a bigger battery cell. I don't know if, uh, how we'll do it, but we'll figure it out. For now, you know what to do. Take it easy.